Good news, everyone. Uh-oh, I don't like the sound of that. Convex has just raised $24 million to continue building the absolute best database and sync platform. This is obviously awesome news as it allows us to grow and become bigger and better, add more features, support many more customers with a larger and larger scale. Jamie, the CEO of Convex, has written this awesome blog post that shares some of the details of the raise, some of our incredible growth stats from the past 12 months, what's coming next for Convex, and why you, yes you, can be a big part of what comes next. So I'm excited to dive into all this with you, share my thoughts and personal experience from working at Convex for the past year. So once you drop me a like and sub, and grab yourself a lovely cup of tea, let's get into it. Convex raises $24 million to reinvent backends. I'm pleased to announce that Convex has raised $24 million to continue reinventing backend platforms for today's teams. The round was led by A16Z and co-led by Spark Capital with participation from Near Ventures, Illumi Ventures and Upscalers. And additionally, numerous angels joined the round, including Ad Adam D'Angelo, Drew Houston and Theo Brown from Theo.gg fame. Did you know that Theo is a massive fan of Convex? Yeah. Well, he is, and he did a whole bunch of videos um, about it. his project T3 Chat, which he moved to Convex a little while ago uh, for various different reasons. But yeah, it's cool. Anyway, so now that we have all the cash in the bank, what are we going to do with it? Hire great people. We'll talk more about that in a bit. We have a lot of work to do and realize the potential of Convex. Our customers are growing and so must we. Convex's customer base, project count, and revenue have grown more than 10 times in the last nine months. And I can very much attest to that, watching it grow from just the social. We have a, a Slack channel on it and it, and it records and it, it monitors uh, people talking about Convex. And it used to be just like one or two things a day people would mention Convex. Now there's just like, I just can't keep up. I cannot view all the things that are happening. It's just incredible what's happened over the last 12 months. Some startups have gone from a college hackathon team to tens of thousands of MMR on the platform, and they've created businesses earning millions annually. We've been with them since day one, and the Convex code base has now comprise, comprise, <laughs> comprised thousands of back-end functions. Finally, we now have dozens of companies on our enterprise plan wait list. By the way, uh, enterprise is coming soon, which means uh, slightly different pricing, larger rate limits, uh, larger scale, more support, all that kind of stuff. They've built successful proof of concepts over the last nine to 18 months and are ready to bet big on Convex, but they need massive scale, additional compliance, data sovereignty, public cloud procurement, SLAs, forward deployed engineering, all of that extra stuff that you get with enterprise stuff. We need exceptional people to help us scale and develop the features and re reliability necessary to serve as the foundation for larger projects and businesses. Yeah, reliability, that's one of the big things. It's kind of scary, you know, having a platform that other people build upon. I mean, most of my career has been around making games and it's not such a big deal if a game goes down. Yeah, you'll have a few annoyed people, but you don't have other businesses that rely upon your game. Convex is different. If it goes down, then other businesses are losing money and it's a huge deal. So anytime there's any sort of outage inside of Convex, it's a massive deal internally and everybody's on top of it. And so I think it's definitely going to be one of those things that it's just Convex is going to continue to try and stay on top of over the coming 12 months. Talking about what's coming. So big new features are coming. Convex components are key to the platform's future. We need them to be faster and easier to build. We need to foster an open ecosystem that encourages collaboration between us developers and partners. Soon we want them to be a real marketplace where individual developers can bootstrap businesses at Convex Components. Yeah, if you're not familiar with Convex Components, they're a really unique part of Convex and backend platforms. You don't see this on Superbase or uh, Firebase, not that they're direct uh, comparisons, but it's a very unique thing to Convex, which is pretty interesting. So. They effectively are small microservices or micro apps, convex apps that are embedded into your app. So they have their own little mini database, they have their own scheduler, they have their own set of the world. But here's the key thing. You can call from your code into the components to do stuff. So this is really helpful for abstracting away commonly used things that are useful that need convex features but you don't want them to be able to touch your data or interact with your, your systems. So for example, things like workflows, AI agents, 
rate limiting, caching for actions, things like that. And, and there's also a whole bunch of other components that are coming that are built by third parties like Resend component or Polar or a bunch of these ones which uh, allow us to integrate with external third, third party systems but in a nicer way. So we keep track of some of the state, we get hooks, and callbacks and things like that. Yeah, so the idea is to continue expanding this components um, area into a fully fledged marketplace so people can external third people can build third parties or you can build a new component add it in here and allow other businesses to build on top of that and scale much more quickly cool stuff anyway continuing on application transactional workloads are excellent on convex but any kind of ad hoc analysis frankly sucks i've done a whole video on the aggregate um, component and to my surprise, one of the biggest things that people were complaining about in here was issues around platform level triggers um, being burnt by the way that aggregates work on Convex. So I'm really excited to see that we're going to try and improve that flow in Convex um, and also bake in support for OLAP. So developers can build aggregates, dashboards, and do explanatory queries without needing to integrate an external data warehouse. So right now as well, you can also actually do, um, we do actually have a way of doing it, having integrations. So let me just show you in the dashboard. So if you open up your Convex dashboard and then you go to integrations, you see there's a number of integrations you can add in here uh, from Sentry to Axiom to Datadog, Webhooks, Fivetran. If you use Fivetran or Airbyte, what you can do is you can actually stream the data from the Convex database out to a, um, a third-party service for Fivetran can go out to an OLAP database or ClickHouse or something like that, where you can do your OLAP processing, your analytics kind of processing. This is kind of inconvenient though. So the idea is to be able to bake in support for OLAP directly into the Convex system itself. We should hopefully unlock a whole bunch of extra use cases. Uh, moving on, so sync is a central part of Convex's vision, but when developers want instant, automatic, optimistic, local interaction with their app data, we currently offer little help. We aim to ship a Convex flavored take on local first that will feel as intuitive and ergonomic as the rest of the product. I personally am super excited about this one, and I know that it's a big pain point with the community is that having a not a really great way to be able to do local first apps is is something that I think is just a, it's just a gap in the convex system that's really needed. So I haven't talked about it before on this channel, but I have this uh, little website tool called Stashit, and it is effectively like a link saving uh, tool. So I have whenever I'm throughout my day, I'm, people are sending me links to interesting things, or I discover something myself, and I don't and I don't want to get out of the flow of what I'm into. So I save a link to it, and then. Uh, I, and then later on in the evening or something, when I'm at my leisure, I then view the link and then I can then choose to archive it and put some text in it. And then um, and then based upon those notes that I put against each item, each archived item in here, um, it then gets fed into an LLM process that runs on a cron job and analyzes my recent notes and build up a profile about myself. And the idea was, is I was going to then have a system that is able to go out onto the internet and then find other articles and things that I might be interested in and suggest them up to me. Now, I haven't quite got there yet, but one of the big reasons why I haven't really taken it any further yet is because I'm waiting for a local first, a good local first solution built into Convex. Obviously, it's kind of a, would be a very valuable feature for an app like this where you're on a plane or something or somewhere where there's no internet, but I want to be able to read articles, but I can't because I don't have the data for them available and I can't navigate through the app or anything like that. So being able to have a local first uh, feature baked into Convex would be, would be amazing. As proud as we are of Convex's DX, we're just getting started. If you're interested in helping us make developers happier and more productive, join our team. Then we've got this tweet from Aflatoon. Insane how just how much Convex Dev has made it fun to make things for me for Recall App. Never really dove much into it before, but now I have a reactive and collaborative markdown editor and it took maybe an hour to get the actual thing working. Let's have a quick look at this. 
Cool, yeah. So this would be using the prosmere component, which again is from the components directory. But it's very, very cool that you can get this working like super duper quick on Convex. Moving on, we're making a durable, generational, profitable business. We've been fortunate that the conversation with developers has evolved. 2023, what is Convex? 2024, is Convex any good? And 2025, is it safe to build in Convex? And yeah, this has definitely been my experience so far is when I tell people before or developers that in our particularly in our sphere, I'm joining Convex, they would be like, what is Convex? And now it's definitely much more a case if they've heard of Convex, but now they're asking, they're, they're asking themselves, is it safe for me to build this inside my company? Can I build a, a decent business on Convex or not? And this is a very important thing for us going forward. So when we serve as the foundation for other people's projects and businesses, we must continue to invest in being worthy of their trust. I'll be brutally honest about the most significant risks because I talk to customers about this nearly every day. What if Convex shuts down? Some worry that a challenging venture capital landscape in the future will mean that we might to sell the company or end the cloud service. What if you jack up prices? Others worry that one day we'll take unfair advantage of high switching costs and monetize customers unsustainably. Yeah, I can definitely see how these two are concerns for businesses. Um, what can we do to address these worries? We can develop a scale up version of our open source self-hosted edition so that customers have a more feasible alternative to our cloud service. That is a really good point. So. Convex does have an open source and self-hostable version. So uh, the Convex backend can be built either uh, to a Docker container. So where's the guide? Here it is. Um, you can either build it to, from a Docker container, so literally just Docker Compose up, or it's even got single standalone binaries. So literally just a single exe file or whatever, and you can run it from that. I think that's that's amazing. And I think it really goes a long way to alleviating some of the concern that Convex is just going to disappear tomorrow, or if it does disappear tomorrow, then your app that you've spent so long building on Convex is, is, is out of luck. Um, but the plan is to make that even better. So making it able to scale to multiple nodes um, much easier. Um, and so again, alleviating some of that concern. We also need infrastructure experts to help us cost optimize our systems, enabling positive cash flow. Then we control our own destiny and keep all our promises to our customers. Yeah, again, this vibe coding revolution has sparked a interesting situation in the back end as a service or back end database space. I think it's a dirty secret at the moment that it is expensive to be able to host a lot of these uh, AI generated databases. Convex is a bit different in the fact that we have invested a lot of time into making it so we can run tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of Convex databases um, on very few hardware nodes. So we're very optimized around being able to run, spin up these Convex databases and how, allow them to run indefinitely for minimal cost. And James Cowling, the CTO of Convex has been a big part of making sure that that's the case. He says here, sometimes you really do just need a better data structure. Subscription worker CPU and latency on one of the higher subscription count Convex dev projects before and after switching to treat based data structure. I have no idea what a treat based data structure is, but it looks like it was good. Let's have a look. Graphs, pretty graphs, spiky, 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 down. Pretty cool. Okay, so onto the Convex needs you part. This requires the best technologists in the industry. We're not just reselling Postgres. I have done many videos on this. Uh, Convex is not just a wrap around Com uh, Postgres. It is a database in its own right. We're trying to create something both novel and foundational at the same time. It's not easy. We've had this quote on our team's page since we were only a few months old. Convex's mission is to fundamentally change how software is built on the internet and who gets to build it. And this is a really good quote, actually. I actually haven't seen this one before. I probably should have seen it. But it's very true. This is one of the big reasons why I came to Convex is a couple of years ago now, back in 2023, I first discovered, yeah, 4th of August, 2023, I wrote this blog post, Tinkering with Convex. Um, <clears throat> you can read about it on my blog. But I really fell in love with the speed of developing Convex, the real-time updates, uh, database schema, the flexible database schema, where it's a document database, but it's also relational. 
I, I just fell absolutely fell in love with the, with the platform and the fact that I was really struggling with just the complexity of AWS and you could do some of these things piecemeal, pull them all together, but Convex just brought it all together and just allowed me to move at such a pace that it was just pleasurable again to build web apps, you know, but doing full stack backend and front end applications. So this, this statement, Convex's mission to fundamentally change our software is built on the internet and who gets to build it, just resonates with me so much. And one of the big reasons why I, I joined Convex. Admittedly, it sounded pleasantly insane when we were just three people, no users and prototype, and it's still pretty crazy, but who knows? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know whether I should share this or not, but Convex is actually pretty small. I think a lot of people overestimate how many people are actually in Convex in this company. I think we're like, I think we're less than 20 people or something. I think there's like 10 engineers, maybe a dozen engineers or something like that. And that's about it, really. People think that we're a big like 100 person company or something. We're not, we're, we're really quite small. But for that small is still a, a incredibly high density of talent. I mean, just a personal experience. <clears throat> Every company that I've worked at and started that I worked at before, I've usually been like the top dog, if that makes sense. Not trying to be too big headed, but like I've always been the, the main uh, lead engineer, the, the top developer, the whatever, you know, the person that, that, that does the main technology inside the company. But since joining Convex, I've really been humbled because I am certainly not the smartest person or the most technically competent person in this company. It's just incredible, the engineers and the talent that, that works here. And I think it's a massive testament to Jamie and James and everybody else here that has built a company of that's able to attract such incredible talent. So if you want to join Convex, then I very, very strongly recommend you do so. The best way to find out about what we're, who we're looking for and to apply is to go to the Work at Convex page or the Jobs page and um, find out one of our open positions or get in contact with me if you would like some more in, uh, inside information. You can leave me a comment down below or come and find me on Discord or on X or something like that. So on that, I think I'm just going to leave this video for now. I'm super excited about Convex's future. Um, the last 12 months has been absolutely life-changing for me and I'm super excited about what's going forward and to continue make awesome content and dive into all the amazing things that the Giga Brains over in the engineering team come up with and excited to share with you everything that makes Convex awesome. So thanks for watching everybody. Until next time, cheerio.